Today we're going to be looking at something a little bit different. Detejic 2-in-1 Absolute Beast. Now, I reached out to this company because I saw a video and I was like a super capacitor power bank. Now, I, I, I know you've seen a lot of power banks and e-bike reviews on this channel and I absolutely love technology. So, with that being said, I'm going to be doing a review on this thing. Now, I'm not going to give you a lot of the tech specs. I'll go through basically the rundown of what it is, what it could do, what it could charge at. Yeah, I'll even give you the watt hours of what it's rated at and then and we're talking about the super capacitor here or the power bank, what it's rated at, what it could do. Again, I could talk about the MAH all day long, and everybody knows that MAH is really only good when we're talking about one consistent voltage. And, you know, with different phones and different laptops, a certain amount of drains, that's really going to get us nowhere. So let's talk about the USBs that they sent me. First off, I want to say the packaging on this is phenomenal. So they sent me the device and then these USBs separately. It is super velvety feel some of you really care about that worth noting this cable is only 60 watts while some people like to charge things at 100 watts it's not really the best thing for whatever you're charging fantastic packaging especially for a cable oh my Ooh, that feels oh my that's a nice cable very very nice rubbery texture on the side of the usb you have tajik branding there is something written on the side of that I do like that shape. I do like that hexagon shape on there. And we will be testing that 60 watts if we can get a true 60 watts out of the cable. Beautiful packaging. My goodness. My God, for a USB cable? Are we serious? And keep in mind that these cables are not cheap. These are not like little $20 jams. Kind of looks like that's printed on the box, doesn't it? I can tell you the construction of this is robust. Like, this feels good. Check the power on that. Four bars right off the jump, all lit up. So on the back of the super capacitor, I, you know, I'm really promoting super capacitor here because that's what intrigued me the most. But basically, the difference between a super capacitor and a regular capacitor is the amount of energy that this can deliver and retain versus a normal capacitor charger is vastly different. There's your inputs and outputs for your USB-C and A's. 24 watt hour. That's really all I care about. I really don't care that it's 8,000 milliamp hours. And then the docking station. So what happens is this kind of slides in. I'll talk about that docking station in a moment. I feel like you don't even need a user manual. Everything is just kind of written there on the side. Gives you the output of each individual port and them combined. 100 watts. I think that's more than adequate. Total output power is 210 watts. Very nice display, extremely transparent, very clear. I just put my fingerprints on there. That is going to be your different mode options. And there is, so when you're looking at different reviews of this, I think they originally showed the Kickstarter variation because there's a USB-A. With this, there's only three USB-Cs, and then on the back is your USB-A. So you are able to use... A and C, but primarily everything is USB-C now anyway. This is your mode button to cycle through the modes. This is just sexy, man. I mean, this is attractive. And this kind of slides in like this, matches up, and then this goes in here like so, and then that charges. It's that simple. Obviously, we have to put some power in this. So I do apologize for that flicker. That is not doing that. That is because of the refresh rate of the camera. So you have your A mode, and it shows you how much each port is going to put out. And if we hold this down, you'll be able to cycle through. There's your B mode, 100 watt, 100 watt off, C3. C mode, 45, 30, and 65. Now, apparently, the C mode is a very consistent current out of all three of those. There's a little display on there showing that if we connect the port, What's going to happen is when we connect that, it's going to ask you to put the capacitor in. See that? And we take it out. There it is. It's a little bit lower. 28 watts. 25. We're about 10% difference, and we're going to consider the voltage drop. I, I do like to consider about a 1 watt voltage drop off of there. So that says 26. That says 28. So it is... 
delivering pretty close to accurate in a 5% window. And then we're going to want to test some of this charging speed if we could get that to 100 watts. Well, actually, we are not going to be able to charge that at 100 watts because of this cable. But what we're going to try to do is we're going to put this into C so we could use C1, C2. And again, this only does 60 watt. The cable only does 60 watt that it comes with. So we are going to test another company that I've tested at 100 watts. I should probably just do the Mac one. But let me get something that we could charge at 100 watts. Okay, here we go. So we are going to test whether or not we could get What did I do with that little tester? There it is. So let's test now. We can get 100 watts through that cable. Let's charge this. That is pretty accurate. What that shows versus what it's doing. Yeah. So that is, I am sorry, it is not going to focus on both of those. So we're only getting about, so you see 52.5 there. 52, well, just jump down 54, 56, 56, so 59, 52. It's kind of jumping all over the place. But you're going to have to take my word for it, 56. 53, 52, so there it is, 58, 59, so it's pretty accurate, 55.4, 70, there you go, 70 watts, I'm, th I'm thinking that the quick B has a bit of a hard time catching up to the speed of the actual drain, but it is close, 44, 42, yeah, it's about one watt off, so it is definitely charging at what it says it can, I, I do apologize, I don't really have any way to test a 100 watt drain um, off of the jump. So let me talk about this real quick. So I was doing it about four volts roughly and we got 3661. So I feel like their provisioning that they have on this, I, I would assume that because they charge this in six, seven minutes, I'm, I don't wanna take away from the fact that it does say it's 8,000 MAH. Uh, that that may be possible, but could be possible also that they're provisioning a huge chunk of this to let's just say 10, 15,000 because they're super capacitating, if that's even a word, charging this that they have to make sure. So basically the provision is you take X amount of battery and you save that for discharge just so you can keep the longevity of the other batteries and the cycles. So I'm just going to round it up and say 4,000, probably 4,200. Keep in mind that heat dissipation, it is a little bit warm, so heat will also affect the MAH. But I feel like this should be a little bit higher just because they do advertise it at 8,000. However, let's not focus on the MAH. Let's look at the watt hours. This is rated for 24 watt hours. We got 17.4. Okay, so let me give you my final thoughts on this little sweet number. Now that this is completely dead, we're going to plug this in. And then we're going to boost this up. We're going to see how quick it takes to fill it up in the time that I talk. So overall, my thoughts on this is it's a really nice system. I like it for the portability. Keep in mind that this is quite expensive. This whole setup as a whole is about $330. And I know what you're going to say is, well, that's ridiculous. First off, I don't know many chargers that have a display on it. Uh, I, I really don't. And to show, you know, I've, I know power banks that do it, but uh, I even have this little sweet number that does uh, 300 watts, 340? Yeah, 300 watts tested. So uh, this being able to charge the power bank and the nice display on the front, I like it, I do. One thing I would change though, with the actual quick B two in one, is for the screen to actually shut off when you don't use it, but it just kind of stays on. And that makes me a little bit nervous. 
Now, I don't think anything is going to happen from you charging this over and over and over. I think because they're so aggressive with the provisioning, that's going to retain a lot of it. And it's hard for me not to believe that this isn't 8,000 MA, just based off the price and the quality and the feel and the texture of everything to display. But if we're basing it off the test, no, we don't get near it. However, they do make it in the silver and gray, which is what you're looking at. And this is more textured versus the little docking station for the supercapacitor or the power bank uh, is more of a uh, smooth feel to it. I think bringing this out to somewhere like, for instance, I'm going to be going to Wildwood, New Jersey, right? I'm going to need a power bank and I'm going to need a charger. So why not just have this instead of bringing a power bank with one of those wall adapters and that kind of serves as one purpose when that dies that dies well with this they could charge this it could do this it's kind of an all-in-one and it's the first of its kind i would 100 recommend it if you're looking at spending this kind of money on this type of system but all in all across the board i really thoroughly enjoy it and if you were to ask me would i go on go buy one because this was sent to me by them uh, would I go on and go buy one? Buy one? Absolutely, I would. I would get the black variation, which they seem to be out of stock of. Uh, but you can see that that already in that little bit of time and talking have filled up two of those slots. But we're just going to wait. We're just going to let that timer run. Keep in mind, too, out of the 210 watts that this can charge at, if you are charging this in the supercapacitor mode, keep in mind that does get very, very, very hot. That that only allots you to use 60 watts through another USB-C. And you'll see there that, that C2 and C3 are both off because it's in the supercharge mode, and just this one is active. Now, it won't allow you. Well, it does say you can do a 260. Um, it's a little bit overkill, but shuts off the other ports, just really focuses all its energy on charging that power bank. And you can see that it is doing it well. 